Ooh. Ooh, ow. All right, guys. Oh. Ooh. Okay, so our second leg day this week with an emphasis on drop sets is all gonna be focused using dumbbells. Now I have three separate exercises here and we're gonna start with a very diabolical exercise, guys. Bulgarian split squats, man, they are fantastic, but man, they hurt, they are hard to do. We're gonna follow it up with some lunges and some squats and the lunges are gonna be slightly different than you're normally used to doing and I'll explain that when we get to that specific exercise. But guys, these drop sets, the whole reason we're doing those this week is to really ramp up the difficulty and the intensity and of course when we do them, we force our muscles into a situation where they actually run out of oxygen, okay? Because we're doing so many reps, okay, without resting and then when that happens, your body starts to produce a lot of lactic acid and it can't flush the lactic acid quick enough, okay? And that's where that burn comes from. And then of course, that all sends signals to our brain to ramp up production of all these really good hormones that us older guys need far more than those young guys in their 20s. So, every trick in the book is what it takes when you're my age. Bulgarian split squats are something all you guys need to work into your leg routines on a regular basis. And after you do them for a while, you'll know why. They are killer. So before I put the weights in my hand, I want to show you how to do them just with body weight. So if you've never done these before, or if you haven't done them very often, okay, you need to practice without the dumbbells first because it is a balance issue, okay? And you got to have kind of learn to get that mind-muscle connection going because the balance will really throw you off and because your feet are so close together, it's easy to go sideways. So, I like to start with my calves touching the bench or the coffee table or the chair, okay, whatever. You need something sturdy back here. And take one relatively long step, okay? I don't want you taking just a little baby step. And the reason is, when we step out here, we're gonna put our back foot up on the bench and you can put your toe like this or you can decide to put it down like that. It's up to you. All right, so when you take a long step and you go down, see how my knee is behind my toe? All right, now if I had happened to take a small step, all right, and then go down, my knee goes out over the front of my toe here. Okay, and we're trying to avoid that. That just puts unnecessary stress on your knee joint and we're, we're trying to avoid injury here. So. Take this kind of a nice long step, foot back. Now the other thing is, I don't want you to get your feet too close to in line with one another because you have no side to side balance. So you need to put your back foot off to the side, okay? And then just practice doing this a little bit with your body weight, okay? And you don't have to go all the way down. Your back knee does not need to touch the ground, okay? I just want you to go down until your body tells you it can't go any further. And kind of get the hang of that, okay? I want you to get that balance. And there is a technique. Make sure your back foot is off to the side relative to your front foot. Make sure your front foot is far enough out that when you dip down and you bend your knee, your knee doesn't go out over your toe, all right? All right, so guys, we're gonna incorporate drop sets. And of course, the only way to do that is with some dumbbells right now. So I want you to pick a weight, all right? You're not gonna be able to do a lot of weight, okay? Pick a weight that you can do at least 10 reps, okay? No more than about 12. So I'm gonna take a nice long step, figure out my foot position back here, and then I wanna knock out about 10. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, in. All right, and without resting, I'm gonna drop the weight. I'm gonna go down, okay, about 20%, maybe, maybe as much as 25%. All right, you can't rush this too fast, okay? One, two, three, four, five, oh, six, starting to burn, guys. I can feel it. I'm gonna drop the weight one more time. Step, position, one, two, three, four, five, 
Ooh. Ooh. Ow. All right, guys. Oh. Ooh. I didn't use a lot of weight there, and I'm really feeling the burn, okay? That's what we're going for. No pain, no gain. That phrase really comes into play when we're doing drop sets, supersets, giant sets, really high rep sets. <laughs> when we're just doing regular normal 10 reps and then resting for a minute, there's not a lot of pain involved in that. Maybe the next day when you're sore, but not during the workout. So drop sets crank up the intensity so much that you will feel the pain just because of the lactic acid, which is nothing more than a waste product produced by your muscle fibers. When you do a lot of reps under a lot of intensity or a lot of load. So I've done one leg. I don't want you going over to the left leg now real quick. I want you to catch your breath because if you get over and do the other side without fully recovering, that means you're going to be gassed and you won't be able to put as much effort into it and hence you're going to get an imbalance. All right, so make sure you rest long enough from side to side that the second side, in this case my left leg, will get hit just as hard with just as much intensity as my right leg. Now we're going to do lunges with dumbbells and we're going to do them just like any other exercise where we're working our legs or our arms side to side or independently. So sometime when we're just doing like regular lunges, we would do alternating. We do right leg lunge, left leg, right leg, right leg, you know, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So because we're doing drop sets, okay, we got to completely change that up. We cannot do that method, okay? So I'm going to focus just on one leg. So we're going to hit the same leg over and over and over again for 10 to 12 reps. We're going to put the weight down, drop it to about 20 to 25 percent lighter weight and then immediately get back and hit that same leg again. Okay, so follow along. I'm gonna show you how this works, guys. All right, so we're gonna be doing all these lunges in place. You don't need to be walking. Remember, if you're walking, then you're doing alternating legs, all right? So by very default, by definition, these have to be done in place. So I'm gonna do left leg. Two. Three. Four. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's drop the weight. See, it's taking only about six or seven seconds. One, same leg. Two, three. Four, five. Let's drop the weight one more time. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now, real quick, guys. I noticed that I didn't use enough weight to start off with, okay? So there's going to take a little experimentation. I needed to start with a much heavier weight because I want you guys to be really fatigued on the very first set, you know, the 10 to 12 reps. I wasn't really fatigued, okay? So lesson learned, just write down how much weight you use with lunges. You won't have to guess next week when we do this. So guys. The other thing is, I want you to pay attention to my form. Some people think that your back knee has to go all the way to the ground for it to be considered a good set or a good rep or a good range of motion. So when I go down, all right, my rear knee comes two to three inches from the ground. So when my back knee is two to three inches of the ground, look at the angle here between my thigh and shin. See how that's 90 degrees? That's a full range of motion, guys. And you can go all the way down if you want, but I don't think anything past 90 degrees here is necessary. And the same theory holds true when you're doing squats. 
A lot of these young guys like to talk about ass to the grass when they're doing squats and they go, oh, the way. oh well, I can't even do it with no weight. You don't have to go that far. So when you're doing a squat, and we'll get to this in just a second, when you go here, my ass is not all the way to the ground. My thigh is not parallel with the ground like some people think you have to be. But look at the angle between here and here. That's 90 degrees. That's a full range of motion, guys. Now that is not 90 degrees. That's 90 degrees. So I want you guys to listen to your body, of course. Some people are not nearly as flexible. Some people can go about three-fourths of the way down and then all of a sudden their knees or the back starts to hurt. That's a perfect place to stop. Stop right before the pain starts, okay? Anyway, lunges, I want you to recuperate after doing one side before you move to the other side. Otherwise, you won't be able to put as much effort into the second leg. Dumbbell squats are a great way to hit basically every muscle group in your lower body. And you will quickly find you're going to get a lot of muscles in your upper body. And because of that, you're going to be really out of breath, okay? It's not just an isolation exercise. This is a very big compound movement with tons of different muscles, lots of different joints working at the same time. Now, I'm gonna show you guys how to do the form first before I pick up the dumbbells. And I wanna explain some differences here. So, first of all, a typical squat position with a barbell on your back. I would want you to take a, a relatively wide stance with your toes pointing out slightly, okay? This gives you a really good base and it allows your knees and everything to kind of go in a natural direction when you squat down. Your knees just want to go out like this, okay? They're going to follow where your toes are. But we don't have this luxury. When we're holding some dumbbells in our hands at our side, they're just going to hit your legs if you take a traditional squat stance. So, guys, I want you all to take a much more narrow stance, okay? And I want your toes pointing forward instead of out. All right, now if they're pointing, if you got a narrow stance and they're pointing out and I'm holding dumbbells right here, see what happens? Your thighs get in the way. Now if my, if my toes are pointing forward and I go down, looky there. The dumbbells in my hands are at the sides and they're avoiding my thighs and my knees, okay? That is the trick, guys, when you're doing dumbbell squats at home because we just don't have a barbell. All right, so. You gotta pick a pretty heavy weight, okay? Hopefully you guys have some pretty heavy dumbbells at home because really strong, big muscle group here, guys. So, I want you to just start off. Remember, we're gonna get into my feet are, they're not touching, okay? They're about eight or 10 inches apart. And the main thing is keep those toes pointed forward. That means when you squat down, those dumbbells will avoid hitting your knees and your thighs. Now guys, remember, first move on a squat, butt goes out, head stays straight ahead. Out, butt, looking forward. Butt goes out. If you just stick your butt out and keep your back in what feels like an arched position, that'll really take a lot of stress off your lower back and prevent you from getting injured. All right, time for my drop set. I'm gonna drop about 20 to 25% of the weight. Not weight, percent. All right, feet together, toes forward. One more drop. Whew. Already out of breath. All right, so, wow. Not only am I out of breath, I'm feeling a burn in my shoulders, my forearms, because I'm having to grip those dumbbells 
for a long time, that's a lot of reps, adds up. Okay, my core is engaging. I don't even have to think about it, okay, because you're having to stabilize your upper body. And then, of course, your quads and your hams and your glutes are all engaging when you're going through that squat movement. So, guys, it basically turns this into a full body exercise. We're building muscle, but because we're using so many, for so many reps, for such a long period of time, one set takes a pretty long time, you might notice, that it turns it into almost of a hit workout, a high intensity interval training, almost, not quite. So anyway, I love the fact that we can cram a ton of work into a really short time period. Just three different exercises, guys, and when you combine them with drop sets, really compacts the amount of time. Now, so guys, I don't want you necessarily doing every set a drop set. So I would have you do all those exercises first, three to four sets, just the regular 10 to 12 reps. Rest a minute, do it again. It's just the last set that I want you doing a drop set on. Otherwise, you'll just kill yourself and you won't be able to walk for the next three days. All right, leg day number two. We were really just discussing how to get a fantastic workout in by doing drop sets, which is a more complicated and more sophisticated actually technique to work out. And you guys are ready for it right now. So, boom, only three different exercises might seem easy, but when you do three to four sets of each and then follow up each set exercise with a drop set at the very end, you guys are gonna thank me tomorrow. Well, maybe you won't. Maybe you'll be cussing me tomorrow when you're limping around because your muscles are so sore. But three days after that, is when you'll be thanking me, when your testosterone and your growth hormone start surging and you start feeling really good and you start building muscle and losing body fat, that's when all the benefits kick in, guys.